So what I'm going to do today is offend a lot of people here. Right? That's my objective. I hope I'll learn something new. Okay? You may agree to it, you may not agree to it. But by a show of hands, how many of you actually do NPS for your organizations? One, two, super. Uh, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions if you're okay with it. I want to understand more about your NPS program. How do you run it? What touch points do you use? And what do you do with that data? So at multiple touch points, we have uh, an NPS survey, uh, like a digital recharge journey, uh, like when they have a conversation with our customer agent or a field service agent, or uh, when they are trying to buy a new product, it's a new customer, not a, a existing subscriber, at multiple uh, ways. After they have uh, gone through our app journeys, um, so we ask for their uh, feedback. When the feedback comes, uh, comes to us, then of course you know how NPS is calculated. Uh, we focus on the detractors. And uh, the inputs that we get from detractors, we work on them. So that's simple that every organization must be doing. Super, that's, that's pretty much how we run NPS, right? NPS pe gyan dene aayo. Tumhe thoda sa apne baare mein bata de toh mein kaun hu kya karta hu. I used to work with this CX company called Litmus World previously. Helped a lot of consumer companies create NPS strategies. Likes of the HDFCs, the Tatas and the RAIs of the world, right? Currently, I lead customer training and education for WebEngage. And some of you in this crowd have already interacted with me in some form or the other. We all, in some form, directly or indirectly, run NPS surveys, right? And the idea is that we want to know what customers feel about our brand so that we can make changes, operational efficiencies, and bring about a lot more revenue and sales. And that's the end objective of NPS, right? <coughs> NPS as a concept was created back in 1993. Fred Reichel wrote a paper for Harvard Business Reviews in 1993. 1993, when customers were not woke. 1993, when 10 pesa could buy you a smoke. 1993, when customers preferred gold spot over coke. If you had to buy something, you had to go to a retail outlet, talk to the nearest car, re vendor, the retailer. You had two, three options. You talked to them. And basis that, you know, he created this metric so that, hey, I have four options. Out of these four, whom would I actually go and connect with? Go and buy from. That was the metric. That was the idea. Retail focused. Since then, a lot has changed. Customer buying behavior has changed. Today, every customer has 10,000 buying options. They can go online, multiple websites, order from Nenital, order from Delhi, from Jammu, from Kerala. You get the products delivered to your doorstep. And there is absolutely zero brand and customer interaction. Everything has changed. But the methodology of calculating NPS, the methodology of using NPS has remained the same. Seems flawed, right? What does 47 mean? Let's say a brand has an NPS of 47. What does that mean? Anybody in the crowd who wants to take a stab? Achha, pehle, achha, mere ko ye bata do, NPS to chamakta hai na sabko. NPS pata hai, right? Net promoter score. How likely are you to recommend my brand to your peers and colleagues? Itna chamakta hai? Usko calculate kaise karte hai? Percentage promoters minus percentage detractors. Ye base clear is upka. Ab agar koi brand bolta hai ki unka NPS 47 hai. What does that mean? <laughs> okay. Anybody who knows what 47 means? <coughs> Neither do I. What does minus 3 mean? Let's say there's a brand whose NPS is 47. There's a competitor whose NPS is minus 3. Kuch andaza laga sakte hai 
three negative reviews? No, it's got more detractors than promoters because the score is a negative. Does that tell me anything about the brand? What does 67 mean then? Even higher number? Matlab business acha kar raha hoga kuch? That's the idea? Let me tell you the brands that these scores represent. Apple is 47, BBK Electronics is minus three, Samsung is 67. If I talk about market share, number one market share with Apple. Number two market share with BBK Electronics, that's the Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus of the world. Number three market share is Samsung. If I take NPS as a benchmark for business, idly Samsung should be doing really well. But that's not reciprocating into business, that's not reciprocating into revenue. I mean, something is fundamentally wrong in this number. Mein. Let me give you more examples. Meta minus 21, Porsche, luxury brand. We all believe that, hey, if the experience is really nice, I'm willing to pay a premium. Where is it? IKEA minus 9, Netflix is 13. Subscription-based model, right? I'm paying 500, 600 bucks every month. Still 13. Google is 11. Biggest example of them all, Marlboro. A cigarette, any smoker is definitely going to buy the same brand the next day. Their NPS is minus three. If experience is directly related to my repeat purchase behavior, Marlboro should be dead by today. Isn't it? But it's not the case. They have a repeat business of 93%. Kuch to galat ho raha hai na pe. Anybody at this point in time believes otherwise. Anybody who thinks ki nahi mein kuch galat bol raho. Koi hai? Nahi hai? Thik. Ye aapka NPS scale hota hai? 0 to 10. 0 to 6 is your detractor, 7, 8 is passive, 9, 10 is promoter. That's how we usually do NPS as well, right? It's overly simplified. Your customer journey is not, your buying behavior, your buying decision is not. Why should an experience or a metric to measure that experience be so simplified? It's easy to game. How many people interact with frontline staff that comes to you and tells you, sir, 9 or 10, de de na, sir. Rating, de de na, mere ko achhi wali. Karte hai na? The whole purpose of NPS is defeated. Most brands do it only for pitch decks today. Because investors like to see NPS. Investors don't understand the implications of NPS. They ask for NPS. Brands are doing NPS. They put it in pitch decks. That's it. NPS ka agenda ye hai. It's supposed to help you drive business and operational efficiency. Nahi karta. It does not account for changes in market forces. I have a great experience with a brand, but does that mean I'm going to buy again from that same brand? It is not, right? Somebody comes with a discount, I'll go and buy from that vendor. It cannot, and with that same logic, it cannot predict revenue. Am I going to lose revenue? Am I going to gain revenue? I cannot predict that. Okay, I have happy customers, that's it. What do I do with that data? I don't know. And lastly, it measures intent and not behavior. I have an intent that I'll see I'll buy from you again. It's not a promising number. If any of you still believe that NPS is valid, you guys can take your call. If you're doing NPS for investors, continue with your current approach. But if you want a solution to a problem that brings about operational efficiency, that brings about business growth, I am going to propose a very radical solution. This is not tested yet. I'm looking for takers who want to take this up. I want brands who can come up and say, hey, I'm willing to try this out. I present to you NPLM, Net Promoter Loyalty Measure.
And I'm not the first guy who's killing NPS and coming up with a radical solution. You go on Google and search for NPS alternatives, you will find 1,000 articles, people who've attempted to do that. The reason why none of them stuck is because one, it is very complicated to implement, and second, requires a lot of operational change. So to fix for all of that, I found a solution that sticks with your existing approach, at the same time is simple enough, gives you better insights. So let's look at what is it. You continue asking your original question of, hey, how likely are you to recommend the brand to your peers and colleagues? You need to know if a customer is happy with you or no, right? But now, you're asking one more question on top of it. How likely are you to do business with my brand? I have an intent to recommend and I have an intent to buy. With these two questions itself, I can help you predict what your repeat business is going to look like in the future. Everything that we've seen so far is always post facto, right? Something has happened and now we're trying to do damage control and then trying to reduce that number. What if you could anticipate that number beforehand? Now your objective is, hey, my customers are telling me that only 20% are going to come back. I need to bring that to 50%. What do I do on top of that? You have your usual detractors, passives, promoters, right? Now you layer on top of that, how likely are you to buy with me? So you've got a likely bucket, unlikely bucket, likely bucket, unlikely bucket, and so on. I'm just putting a two-point scale here, and you already have six different buckets. Somebody who's a detractor has a bad experience and is still willing to buy from you. The problem is the experience. Can we do something about it? These are the people who will tell you everything that is wrong with your business on the front end. Somebody who's a detractor and is unlikely to buy, that's a segment where you require manual store intervention. Somebody to reach out to that person urgently because he's at the cusp of going to social media and harping about your brand with a negative emotion. We all know that anybody who has a bad experience will tell 12 people. Anybody who has a good experience will only tell two people. We don't want bad social media reputation. So you know these people are to be attended immediately. Passives, give them perks and benefits, or do qualitative intervention. If you have a passive who's telling you that I don't want to buy from you, talk to them. They'll tell you everything that is wrong with your business. They'll give you insights that even market research will not help you with. And lastly, you've got promoters. So I, I have a good, good experience. I'm going to buy from you again. I'll run a loyalty program for you. I'll use you for ORM. I'll use you for reviews. I'll use you for other things. And lastly, if you're a promoter but still not willing to buy from me, these are people who are micro-influencers. I'm an Apple fanboy. But if somebody asks me, hey, can you recommend a good Android phone? I will recommend Samsung, right? We often neglect these customers, and very specifically the passive portion of it, right? Our NPS does not account for passives, and that's almost 40-50% of our overall audience usually. Now that's just two. Now if I convert the second question into a five-point Likert scale, I have 11 options in the NPS question, and five questions, five options in the second question. Imagine the complexity that you would get into. I told you it's going to be very easy to implement. So let's make it simple. Let's say I have 11 point NPS scale on my X axis and I have a five point Likert scale on my Y axis. Immediately we can identify four different quadrants. My first quadrant is they like the experience and they're likely to buy from me, right? That's quadrant one. Quadrant two is they don't like the experience but are still going to buy from me don't like the experience, will not buy, like the experience, but not likely to buy. Four broad buckets. I have given you four different segments right now that you can create on your audience base and run interventions. So far? So let's say I have, you know, likely to recommend and likely to buy. 
good and bad. A loyalist would be who's got a good experience and is willing to buy. I call them a loyalist. Anybody who's had a bad experience but is still willing to buy from me, I call them potentials. I can give one simple nudge, the experience changes and they become loyalists for my brand. Somebody who's got a good experience but is not willing to buy, they're practically leakers for me. My bucket is still going to leak because I have these people in my audience. And lastly, I have misfits where the experience is bad and they're not willing to buy from me. This is not my target audience. I will exclude them from all my campaigns in the future. If I look back at it, this is your quadrant one, that's quadrant two, that's quadrant four, and that's quadrant three for you. NPS gives you one single number to benchmark your performance. I can't create quadrants every time a customer is responding, right? I also need one single number. I present to you the formula to calculate NPLM. 75% of the people in bucket one, 50% of the people in bucket two, 25% of the people in bucket four, and 0% of the people in bucket three. With this, you will get one single number that you can use as a benchmark to predict future business. Confusing, right? We'll do a live demo today. I'll show you how LPLM is calculated. I'll show you how easy it is for you to implement. But before that, right? It's very simple to implement. You're already doing NPS, just add one more question. That's all it takes. It measures experience and user behavior, makes it actionable. It predicts revenue churn. If a customer is blindly telling you that I'm not going to buy from you, you can take them out of your repeat business aspirations, right? It accounts for modern customer journeys as well. It's not just about retailers. It's not just about e-commerce platforms. No matter where you buy my product from, are you going to buy my product again from that same source? And lastly, it gives you actionable insights. Now I give you four buckets. There has to be something that you need to do with these four buckets as well. How do you engage with these four buckets? How do you engage with these audiences so that you convert all of them into loyalists? For all the existing loyalists, you need to give offers, discounts, keep them happy, keep them happy, whatever it takes. Create VIP programs. Ask them for reviews and testimonials and keep communicating with them, keep them engaged, keep them happy. If you go silent as a brand, your customers will go silent on you, which we don't want, obviously. So you need to find ways to keep engaging with them. If you're a potential, that's the bucket where, you know, you need to improve the experience overall. Boost participation. Focus on personalization. Personalization helps you increase the overall experience of a customer. Start doing that. Be proactive and predictive in nature. Your customers will never know what they want until you tell them that they need to buy this product. So let's be proactive in nature, right? Let's say you're a diaper brand, you're selling diapers, and I've given this example multiple times, right? Let's say you're a diaper brand selling diapers. You know that pack is going to exhaust in the next 21 days. Can you be proactive in your approach? Reach out to the customer on the 15th day and tell them, hey, your pack is about to expire. Do you want to restock? This one use case drives 40% of the revenue for first cry. Be proactive in nature. You've got leakers, right? They have a good experience with you, but they're not going to buy from you again. Kya karo ge inka? Inke pain points pata karo. Exactly chal kya raha inke dibag mein. Kyun kharidna nahi chaate hain? Are they not my right target audience? Are they not happy with the product? Is there something massively wrong with the product? You can offer discounts based on how engaged they are with your brand. And you can create referral programs for them. Khud nahi kharide ka, kisi aur ko to bolega na kharidne ko. 
And lastly, you've got the misfits. These are people who are absolutely not your target market. Inko exclude kaise karoge aapke reach out strategies mein, that's what you need to figure out. Understand why there is a product market fit with these people. They bought it in the first place, but now they don't want to come back to you. Something was wrong, either in your acquisition strategy or your product or your overall experience. What is that PMF gap? Let's identify that. Give your brands a face to vent out. One of, the, one of our clients in my previous company, uh, the national head of customer experience would actually reach out to their detractors, unhappy customers, call them up on the phone and ask them, hey, what's wrong? What can I do to make your experience better? And he would get far more insights than 10,000 NPS surveys that he's already run. So find out what's wrong with these people. Let's see NPLM in action. I want everybody to pull out your phone and scan this QR code. You'll see a Google form where there is an ideal questionnaire for NPLM. I want you to fill out that information. And as an example, I have used engagement. I want to capture feedback about engagement. You spend the entire day with us. I want to know how happy or unhappy you are with engagement. I request everybody to please scan this QR code and fill out this form. Super. I have data flowing in. You guys have responded. Apparently, people have had a bad experience with engagement, right? It's been chaotic, too many tracks happening, cannot keep a track of where to go, what to attend. Logistically, there have been a lot of challenges. My NPS is, keep, is, is continuing to go down, right? I have more detractors and more passives than promoters. But if you look at the other bucket, I have 20 loyalists. I have eight potentials, four leakers, five misfits. I can predict that if I conduct engagement in the coming month, again, in the same location, 50% of you are going to come back. By a show of hands, how many of you would actually come back if we did an engagement next month? Proves my point. I am predicting behavior for an action that has not happened yet. And it's not rocket science. I am not using AI, ML. It's just a simple Google Sheet formula that I've applied. I can solve for experience, right? My NPS is minus 25. I can solve for experiences. I can get better speakers. I can get... Um, better venues, I can split this entire event on two days. But you guys enjoyed the content and that speaks in NPLM. That's the idea. Now I want to raise this question to everybody. Who's with me to give it a shot? I actually want somebody, super, I actually want somebody to try this with me. I want data to back this up. I want to create a research paper and make it public, a co-joint research paper with a brand and web engage. Sir, you're interested in doing this? Super, you're interested in doing this. Shashi is obviously interested in doing this. I know I'm, Are super, I've got so many takers. I will reach out to all of you separately. Let's do it. Let's, let's do this extra exercise. Let's see what insights we can pull out. Let's see how better we can make our retention strategies. We are always asking, right? Or kya karna hai? Kuch batao, kuch use case batao, kuch hack batao. Ye lo ek hack de de aapko. Theek hai? Karenge? I will reach out to the four of you later on and I will connect and we'll take this forward.